Lots of reasons to come here, um, but one of the reasons we, we rarely talk about is the outdoor activities. This is Las Vegas Real Estate Now with local real estate expert Harvey Blankfeld. I don't think that people recognize, if you haven't been to Vegas, you don't know. Yeah. First time I came here, I was shocked at the, at the views, the vistas mm. into the mountains that surround their valley. It's just really remarkable. Phenomenal. People don't understand. It really is. And now this, this article that Mr. Dolan wrote in the LA Times kind of backs that up. And so, and so, um, so he says, for many of the Lord, Las Vegas is near complete immersion in the man-made world, but visitors bury themselves deep inside temperature-controlled casinos surrounded by artificial light sounds with no windows or even clocks. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They don't put clocks in casinos. Uh, to remind me of the answer, but it's one of the indoorsiest places on the planet. But just outside the city, about 20 minutes from the bachelor parties and slot machines, a growing number of elite outdoor, elite outdoor athletes are buying homes, starting families, and declaring Las Vegas the adventure sports capital of the United States. I love this. Uh, it just, cool. and, and they go on to quote, uh, this is, says, it just has unparalleled access to the outdoors, gushed Alex Honnold, the world's most famous rock climber and subject of the Academy Award winning do uh, documentary Free Solo about his breathtaking 2017 ascent to Yosemite's El Capitan, a nearly vertical granite wall that rises 3,000 feet above the floor. They go on to talk about Red Rock Canyon conser Conservation Area. Um, they go on to talk to, to him about other things. He says, honestly, I would say Las Vegas is better than any of the other cities in the country that have a reputation for being outdoorsy, Honnold said. People go to Denver because they say they want to be near the outdoors, but it's at least an hour's drive uh, away from the real mountains in Denver, which is interesting. Is that right, Carly? You, you, I mean, you know. Yes, you, yeah. um, in Vegas, you can live in the middle of suburbia and be 15 minutes from the trailheads where you can be completely alone and feel, your, <laughs> feel like you're going to die, he says. I just... Two companions hunched over and grasped for breath. Um, and also what sets Vegas apart is the unexpected geographic diversity, making world-class climbing easily accessible year-round. In the winter, there are endless routes uh, in Red Rock and the canyon that just begins beyond the suburbs. Sandstone walls start about 3,000 feet elevation, uh, which means they're low enough to remain warm and pleasant even in December and January. So, yeah, you can climb in the, climb in the winter. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but then when spring and summer roll around, the summer becomes a furnace, 12,000-foot <laughs> Mount Charleston. Is, is less than an hour's drive away. And I, I love going to the Mount Charleston in the summer. It's right? so beautiful. Just get out of the heat. Yep. You know, go up there and enjoy some some. Uh, and even life. now, I don't know this week with the high heats, but even as of last week, there were still uh, some snow. waterfalls Yeah, from the from the snow melting. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. Exactly. Yosemite is a world, is, is, is you want to talk about Yosemite being, you know, is, is a world-class destination in the spring and fall, but uh, the summer, it's too hot there and too crowded. Everyone goes there in the summer. It's not hotter than here, is it? In Yosemite? No. Can't be. Okay. No. So I'm not sure I'm going to go with that. But anyway. <laughs> um, and, and then they, they talk about a bunch of other people. They had Emily Harrington. She's a five-time U.S. national champion in sport climbing and one of one of Honnold's good friends. Uh, knows what I'm doing. She says, Yosemite is a hard place to exist. She said, you spend all day pushing yourself to mental and physical exhaustion on the climbing walls, but there's no rest when you come down. You have to find a place to camp. Park the van, drive the van along crowded, windy roads, find a place outside the park. And even when you find a place, you're still stuck in a van. Um, but she says, I want to say, that's why we bought a place in Vegas, not far from Honnold, uh, his wife and their two young kids. Uh, she, her joy and relief are palpable. She lists the upsides of the new arrangement. I can go out, drive five minutes to the trailhead, climb big routes all day, and then come back to my house and my kid, and put him to bed, and I don't have to live in a van. So, again, Vegas provides the opportunity to, to have world-class climbing uh, and then just go home. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Living in a van. It reminds me of that uh, Saturday night skit. You know, like, <laughs> down right, by the river? Living in a van down by the river. <laughs> right? I don't know why. I just popped into my head. Um, John, Jonathan Secrets, who's 38, who is regarded as one of the world's greatest technical climbers, couldn't agree more. He said, while Honnold was battling the, the rainbow wall at nearly 90-degree height in Red Rock, Seacrest and his wife, Shana Savoy, huddled in a puffy jackets between pitches on the cool limestone of nearby Mount Charleston. So, yeah, there's opportunities all year round, all around the valley. They're not even talking about around Lake Mead, too. Right, or, or Valley of Fire. Valley of Fire, I yeah. mean, that's just, that's yeah. so gorgeous out there.